subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Asian Palm Civet. It's dinner time! Hi everybody! My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Oh, you're out of water. I'll get some more for you. You're finished already? That was fast. Hey, where's this dog food leading to? It's an animal. So you're the one who ate Hero's food. What kind of animal are you anyway? I know. Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still. Hi, Katie. Do you know what animal it is? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an Asian palm civet. It's also called a toddy cat, but it's not really a cat. An Asian palm civet. So why did it steal Hero's food? Sometimes the Asian palm civet eats pet food that has been left out in the open. But the Asian palm civet usually eats small animals, insects, fruit, and flowers. But now it gets weird. The Asian palm civet also eats coffee beans. And when the civet poops out those coffee beans, some people take the beans and make coffee from them. Wait, what? People make coffee from the civet's poop after it eats coffee beans? And they drink it? Yes, this coffee is called Kopi Luwak. And it's one of the most expensive coffees in the world. Unfortunately, because Kopi Luwak is so popular, some people keep civets in small cages and only feed them coffee beans. Oh no, that's horrible! Absolutely, Leo. Asian palm civets prefer to live outside, in the tropical rainforests in Asia. We should take it back to the rainforest where it belongs. Come and join us! Great idea, Leo. See you downstairs! Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you have an Asian palm civet with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We want to find a home for it. The Asian palm civet is a nocturnal animal. That means it rests in the day and is awake at night. The Asian palm civet likes to eat the fruit and sap from palm trees. So if you want to find a home for the civet, you should look for palm trees. But remember, Junior Rangers, some farmers see civets as pests, so stay away from plantations. Plantations? A plantation is a large area of land on which fruit, trees, and plants are grown to be sold. The civet might sneak into plantations and eat the fruits from the trees. And the farmers don't like that. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Oh no! Come back, Civet! It's going to another plantation! We better go after it. Leaving an Asian palm civet in a plantation is not a good idea. Ugh, this place smells! The smell comes from the durians. They must be ripe. So those fruits are durians? <gasps> That durian almost hit me! Good idea, Hero! My hat and your helmets can protect us, but I don't think we should stay here too long. Hero, can you sniff the civet out? 
The strong smell from the durians must be covering the civet scent. Hmm, we can use the heat vision on Hero's camera. We can view the image on my tablet. There, on the ground. That's not our civet, it's a wild boar. Poor ah! boar, I don't think it deserved that. There you are, you got us worried. Great, we found our Asian palm civet. Let's head back to the Jeep. We did it! We found a home for the Asian palm civet. Great work, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found an Asian palm civet in our garden. We learned that Asian palm civets like to eat the fruit and sap from palm trees. So we went to the rainforest to find a home for the civet near palm trees. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan tiger. Hero, where are you, Hero? <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time, Hero. Let's see who's stronger. I challenge you to a game of tug of war. <coughs> you take this end of the rope, and I'll take this end. The first one to pull the flag past their line wins. Ready, Hero? And go! Not bad, Hero, but I'm not gonna lose. What? How? What are you? Are you some kind of cat? Those are some beautiful stripes on its fur. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, kitty. Hi, Katie. Did you find more information about the cub? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cub you found is a Malayan tiger. A Malayan tiger? Does that mean it comes from Malaysia? That's right. To be specific, Malayan tigers come from the forests of the Malayan Peninsula in Southeast Asia. But they can also be found in Southern Thailand. I see. So what do Malayan tigers eat? Like all tigers, Malayan tigers are meat eaters. They usually feed on deer, wild boar, and sun bears. But when there isn't enough food, Malayan tigers sometimes attack people and farm animals. Because of this, many tigers are illegally hunted by people. Tigers are also hunted for their body parts, like their skin. This illegal hunting is the reason why Malayan tigers are critically endangered. That means Malayan tigers are very in danger of disappearing forever. There are only about 250 Malayan tigers left in the wild. Oh no! We should protect Malayan tigers so they'll still be around in the future. You're right, Leo. But a tiger cub needs to be with its mother so it can learn how to hunt and get milk to grow. Only its mother can protect the tiger cub. Then let's bring the tiger cub back to its mother. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs.
Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a Malayan tiger cub. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're here to bring the tiger cub back to its mother. That's great, Leo. But you must be careful not to get close to adult tigers. They might mistake you for prey and attack. Oh, dear. We'll be super careful, Ranger Rocky. What else should we know about Malayan tigers? A mother Malayan tiger usually has one to five cubs. These cubs stay with her for a year and a half before leaving to find their own home. During the time with their mother, the cubs will learn how to hunt and stalk prey. If you want to find the cub's mother, you should keep a lookout for places with tall grass. Tigers prefer to live in tall grass, where they can hide from predators and ambush their prey. Good luck and stay safe, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. We're here. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to look for the cub's mother in the tall grass. We won't be able to see her coming. What if we look for the cub's mother from up there? Good idea, Katie. Come on, everybody. Let's fly. Tiger cub! Oh, no! The tiger cub jumped into the tall grass. We have to find it. Where did the cub go? Leo, could the tiger cub be in there? Or maybe it's over there. The tiger cub might be in one of the grass patches, but we can't go into the grass to check. There might be predators in there. Hey, I've got an idea. I'll use this. Great idea, Leo. Let me try it. Tiger cub. I got you, little one. We did it. We found the tiger cub's mother. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! a Malayan tiger cub in our garden. We learned that Malayan tigers are endangered and that tiger cubs need their mother to be protected. So we went to the forest and brought the tiger cub back home to its mother. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The smooth-coated otter. Hero, over here, buddy. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Do you want to play a game, Hero? <laughs> Great. Let's see who can jump the highest on this trampoline. I'll show you. All you have to do is jump as high as you can like this. Ta-da! Now it's your turn, Hero. <laughs> Very good, Hero. Woohoo! Wah! Hey, I think it's a baby otter. I wonder how it got here. You know what we should do? Let's make a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, little one. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The computer is looking for information about the adder as we speak. There you go. This little one is a smooth-coated adder. So, it has a smooth coat? Yes, that's exactly how it gets its name. A smooth-coated otter is a type of otter that has shorter and smoother fur. They also have a rounder head and a hairless nose that looks quite like the shape of a diamond. Where do they come from? Smooth-coated otters live in different countries in Southeast Asia. 
The one you found comes from this place. Cool! I wonder what kind of food it eats. Snow-coated otters usually eat plenty of fish, but it's an omnivore, which means it can eat different types of plants and small animals, too. Hmm, I'm afraid it won't find all that food here. We should bring it back to its family. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. I'm sure the baby otter would love that. See you downstairs. Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Oh, I see you've brought along a male baby otter. It's, it's a, a he? he? Most definitely. Male smooth-coated otters tend to be larger in size than females. This one seems just the size. We're here to return him to his family. Do you know where we should look, Ranger Rocky? Smooth-coated otters are usually found in places with lots of fresh water. You could start there. Hmm. So that means we have to look for rivers or lakes. That's right. It seems they mostly prefer river stretches with lots of greenery to build their homes. Why is that, Ranger Rocky? The grass and plants provide cover from other animals and shelter the otters from the sun's heat when they look for food. Remember that smooth-coated otters try to stay away from sandy and open areas because it makes them easy targets for other animals. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hmm. It looks like the only way to get to that river is to cross this one. No problem. Come on, everyone. Thanks, Leo. Now we can get to the other side in no time. <laughs> That's right, little guy. We're going to find your family very soon. Look, we're getting closer. What's the matter, hero? Oh no, the little guy's in danger. We have to save it from those crocodiles. <laughs> Katie, take the wheel. I got you two. Chasing us! We'll have to go faster! Leave it to me! Whoa! Watch out for those rocks, Katie! We made it! Looks like they won't be chasing us anymore! Excellent! We did it! We found the baby otter's family! Great work, everyone! Hooray! Yay! Today, we found a baby smooth-coated otter in our garden. We learned that the smooth-coated otter lives in places with lots of fresh water and greenery. So we went to a river by the forest and found its family. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Dawn Bat. Hi, 
everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time, buddy. Look, it's starting to bloom. It's beautiful. Now I will draw it. Look, Hero, my very first drawing of a night-blooming plant, the water lily. Oh, night-blooming plants are plants with flowers that open only at night. Let's look for more night-blooming plants to draw. Hmm, what's that over there? Come on, everybody, let's have a look. That's not a plant. It's a bat! I wonder what kind of bat this is. Do you think it wants to drink our blood? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So, what kind of bat is it? Hi, Leo. The bat you found is a dawn bat, which is also known as the cave nectar bat. It drinks nectar. Not blood. And nectar is the sugary liquid found in plants, right? That's right. But this bat prefers nectar from night-blooming flowers. It also feeds on pollen. That's the powdery stuff on flowers. When these flowers bloom, they have a very strong smell that attracts the bats. But why was that bat behaving so strange earlier? Dawn bats are nocturnal, which means they are active during the night. You must have frightened it with the flash when you took the photo. Oh, no. I'll make sure to switch off the flash next time. Where does it come from? Dawn bats live in different countries in Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Should we return it to its home? There aren't enough dark places for it to rest here. Come and join us. Great idea, Leo. I'm sure the bat would love that. Let's go. Ranger Rocky! Hello there, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. Ah, you've brought a dawn bat with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're trying to bring it back to its home. Do you know where we should look? Keep a lookout for caves. Dawn bats tend to live together in large groups called colonies that sometimes number up to the thousands. Wow, that's a lot of bats. So to find the dawn bat's home, all we have to do is look for a cave with lots of other dawn bats, right? That's right. And with so many dawn bats in a cave, it's bound to be very noisy. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Wait, come back. Where are you going, little bat? Which way did it go? It was too fast to see. Katie, take the wheel. I'll search for the bat with my sound detector while you drive. Good idea, Leo. Now let's see. It's this way. Turn here, Katie. Can you see anything? No, but it smells weird here. Mmm, I find it quite nice. It's coming from there. Lead the way, hero. Ugh, the smell is getting stronger. It's the dawn bat. It must have been hungry. Look, it's feeding from that flower. Hey, is that a night-blooming plant? This flower is part of the durian tree. And you're right, Leo. The flowers blossom only at night. Are you ready to join us, Dawn Bat? Careful, Leo. See those sharp, spiky things up there? Those are durian fruits. When the durians are ripe, they fall down, so don't stand too close. Thanks for the warning, Katie. 
Look, both the fireflies and the bats feed from the flowers on the trees. Goodbye, little Dawn Bat. We did it. We found the Dawn Bat's home. Great work, everyone. Hooray! Yay! Today, we found a dawn bat in our garden. We learned that the dawn bat feeds on night-blooming flowers and lives in caves in large groups. So we went to the rainforest and brought it back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there. 